I'm going to kick us off. Um, uh, if Patrick, you'll leave the slide up for a second, just because I want to do a quick round of intros as well. Um, hopefully, you all can see me probably, probably off on some uh, small corner of the Zoom screen. And in a second, I'll come back uh, full screen. But my name is Michael Diamond. I'm the academic director and the clinical assistant professor of uh, marketing. Uh, at the School of Professional Studies in our Division of Programs of Business. And it's my absolutely distinct pleasure to welcome all of you to an information session. Uh, for those of you who've expressed an interest in our uh, degrees, our, our master's degree programs in marketing and uh, PR. And I'm delighted as the uh, panel photos here will show that we've had a chance to engage a number of our faculty, our colleagues in, in the admissions office, uh, advice and as well, uh, some special guests and student leaders who we thought you'd probably want to hear from. Um, so a uh, couple of things, we are recording this event. So, you know, please make sure you know that. Um, if you have a question, I want you to do two things. One is, uh, if you want to write something out, pop it in the Q&A, you'll see there are a couple of bubbles, speech bubbles at the bottom of your screen. You're probably, everybody's used to this at this point. Um, and uh, but please, you know, pop pop that in the in the Q and A in the bottom. And if you also want to raise your hand, there's a, a little device. Uh, sometimes it's under reactions. Sometimes it's right there at the bottom. It says raise hand. Um, then I will know that you're interested in asking a question, and I'm more than happy to sort of uh, the language is to promote you uh, so that you can ask the question on video if you like. And I may actually call on some folks as well. So so. Uh, Patrick, if you want to take this, that slide down, I think I probably could jump in. Uh, where we could travel to the next uh, uh, slide, I guess. So, uh, you know, here's a quick rundown of how we're going to run the meeting. Uh, welcomes from me, uh, largely largely complete, but I want to say a few other things. Uh, then you'll hear from our uh, student organizations. We uh, invited Clara Farsha, who's the president of the uh, marketing student organization, which is called the Integrated Marketing Association, very active um, and very engaged group of folks. And Tristan Petrelli, who is the president of the PR League. So that represents all of our PR students. You'll hear a little bit from our admissions team um, from Eddie Bay about the application process and, you know, a few do's and don'ts and, and places to find information. Um, and then uh, more of a, uh, a sort of direct program and curriculum overview from Kat Tartaglia. Kat Tartaglia is one of the academic advisors. There are, are several who work with us in marketing and PR. And for anybody interested in our program, uh, once they get through the sort of admission stage, you know, the advising team is a phenomenal uh, group uh, of, of folks as resources. Uh, we want to spend a little bit of time talking about career development. We are very lucky to have a a team, um, a program called the Wasserman Center dedicated to our efforts. And Kat's also gonna give us a little bit of, you know, insight into the work of that team. And we, we think that um, obviously uh, your professional career, your, your uh, you know, your opportunity to get a job, et cetera, is, is an integral part of your education uh, in our program. So we think it's important to highlight that. Um, and so let me, let me sort of press on. Um, the Integrated Marketing Communications Department uh, is a very large group. Uh, we can backtrack one if you don't mind. Um, it's a very large group within the school. Um, it's probably the strongest um, programs uh, that the School of Professional Studies uh, you know, hosts and manages. And it is almost certainly uh, the Masters in Integrated Marketing is the largest marketing program, dedicated marketing program in the country. Uh, possibly uh, at the graduate level, um, possibly the PR program is up there too for, for public relations. So, you know, these are programs of real scale, uh, a total of about 1300 students across, uh, you know, the different years and the different uh, disciplines, uh, about 250 faculty, uh, you know, all drawn either from academia or from industry, uh, consulting agency well, big business, et cetera, with deep marketing and communications experience. So, you know, I just want to give you a sense of scale. Um, you know, it's a truly, uh, it's an award-winning program as well. I'm sure we'll touch on that a couple of times. We, we've won both the PR Week Award and, and been listed as the A-listers in the PR News Award. Um, and, you know, the program itself in integrated marketing is, is 25 years old this, this year. Long and distinguished history, uh, you know, developed at the earliest time 
and, and morphed and grown over those 25 years to sort of, um, you know, parallel and amplify and transform, I would argue, you know, marketing education as we've moved into digital and other things like that. So, so let's just advance. And I, I want to share with you, because I think it's important, you know, it's context, but I also think it's important that uh, as, as potential students, you have a really good idea about, you know, our philosophy, what we're about, uh, what we think is important in the world. And, and what we see as a team is that four broad themes are driving significant change already for marketing and PR practitioners today. Uh, it goes almost without saying that data and digital uh, and the impact of, of all of that technology enabled interfaces is, is having a rapid um, and accelerating transformational um, impact on how value is created, communicated and captured. And, and that definition in itself is often something you hear um, uh, as, as a way of expressing what marketing and PR can do, you know, the creating a value, communicating and capturing a value. So data and digital is central to the curriculum. It's central to how we think. It's driving a lot of our research programs. Um, many, many students are getting internships and jobs in these areas, clearly. But at the same time as this sort of technology-enabled world is, 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 is all around us, there has definitely been, and, and, and I think Clara and her team very thoughtfully have themed this year's student conference around a return to authenticity. You know, there's been a return to questions that are much more human centered, especially around uh, issues of trust and reputation management, and, and very much a re-examination of, of, of a company's focus towards its own purpose and, and trying to be attentive to how consumers and indeed employees, um, what their expectations are of brands to lead. Um, another pillar um, important for marketing and uh, PR generally, but very close to our hearts because we represent an extraordinarily diverse and, and global um, set of students and faculty is this idea of global growth and, and global growth uh, for modern marketers is not just about finding the next market to export your product, but it's a real acknowledgement that the uh, sources of innovation of influence, of investment, et cetera, are, are, are driven and will continue to be driven by many growing global markets outside the US. You know, and, and we see this obviously with social media in China, but we see it with things like micropayments in Africa. And we, we, we see um, all sorts of you know, very interesting e-commerce applications in Latin America. You know, so there's an awful lot of interesting development outside the US, which we try to engage with and, and, and uh, you know, incorporate in our thinking. And finally, and I think it's one of the things that makes us very unique, and, I, and I, you know, I'm constantly trying to push us to explore this, is the fields of marketing and PR are really integrating in many respects. At least the lines are blurring. In some instances, they are literally integrating. You know, Jonathan Adeshek recently was announced as both the CCO, i.e. the Chief Communications Officer, and the CMO, i.e. the Chief Marketing Officer of IBM. And you've seen these kind of... Um, you know, connections being made all around, uh, you know, corporate America. Um, and indeed, uh, you know, if they're not made formally by titling one person, they're often clearly encouraged um, uh, in, in the way people work together. And I think you'll hopefully hear a little bit more about that. It's, it's very much driven by the fact that um, in what's sometimes called an omni-channel world or a multi-stakeholder world, uh, you can't um, communicate with your various publics uh, certainly not with consumers uh, through one channel and assume they won't hear or know or learn about you in other channels. So it's become very important that uh, the modern market or the modern PR professional understands how to uh, function in an integrated fashion. And so I think, you know, we, we've identified these four pillars as important themes. Um, they inform our pedagogy, uh, they inform our curriculum, and they certainly inform our research agenda. So. Um, and, you know, I, I think probably one of the questions that you all are asking or should be asking is why NYU SPS um, and I, I for a marketing or a PR education. And I'd like to say that, you know, what we believe about SPS is that it's, it's really uniquely well placed to equip the future leaders. And we see all of you as future leaders with the professional skills that you're going to need and also a, an ability to generate uh, applied research. Yes, we, we are not in the business uh, of uh, sort of an academic uh, knowledge creation effort, sometimes you know, referred to as elegant or irrelevant. You know, we're, not, we're not in the business to be purely read and published in academic journals. 
but as a group of academics and, and practitioners, we're, we're in the business of trying to uh, impart and engage you in uh, the practical and applied knowledge. Um, so it's academically rigorous, but it's really focused on how to take that forward. So, you know, three, I think, aspects of the program and the department, uh, but they are reflective of the school more generally, I would bring your attention to. At the top here, we talk about an integrated approach. I think we spent a little bit of time on that already. Um, to the left, you know, even in a virtual world, we're still very much anchored in New York City. It's the media and marketing capital uh, of the world still, uh, even the entertainment capital in some respects. Um, and what that has enabled us to do is to really draw and attract a large number of what we, what we coin uh, as reflective practitioners. So practitioners are really thinking about their, their practice at quite senior levels. Um, and that's hard to do if you're elsewhere. You know, we, we can sort of, we have that mass of connections and, um, and, and I imagine as we return, you know, in person, we'll have more of that again in person. And we're also a global and very diverse community. You know, we, we represent uh, New York. It's another aspect of being in New York. It's a powerful aspect of being in New York is the diversity of the community and, and the place that we draw from uh, both students and inspiration, as I talked about earlier. And, and I want you all, uh, uh, give me one sec more <laughs> for my bubble up there. I want you all, if you wouldn't mind, do not enter uh, the program thinking, should I be a marketing analyst or should I be a brand manager? Or, you know, am I interested in uh, com tech, which is communications technology, or am I interested in, you know, uh, press releases? The, 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 the modern marketer, the modern communications professional, uh, all of the industries need to, and, and it's, a, a, you know, it's an absolute watchword of what we teach here, is that the disciplines are both human-centered and data-driven at the same time. You know, every marketer, for example, entering our program has to take a class in stats. But at the same time, every marketing analyst has to understand what integrated marketing communications look like, what consumer insights are, you know, how media is bought and sold, et cetera. You, you need a, a full, rich and, and diverse education. And we're hoping that you graduate intellectually curious and engaged and knowing enough of the disciplines to really act as a translator between, yes, sir. The most sought after skill today is, is not necessarily, uh, certainly beyond entry level jobs, it's not necessarily the marketing analyst or the brand manager. It's people who uh, have that capacity to shift between worlds, to translate complex ideas into simple ideas, to understand how technology and data can be integrated into marketing campaigns, uh, you know, to manage, as we spoke about earlier, across multiple channels and touch points, et cetera. So, so think of yourself, you know, entering this journey as someone who needs to both sharpen individual skills, but also broaden uh, the portfolio uh, of skills that you, you, you need as a modern marketer. So, um, you know, as a student in the, the department, uh, you, as I said, you'll become very much part of a global community, uh, lots of opportunities, many of them curated by our students, our wonderful students themselves to gain access to leadership and professional opportunities and, and individuals themselves. And we hope and we constantly strive to be part of a, a very unique and, and quite rigorous academic experience. Just because at some point during the course of the evening, we're gonna throw a lot of acronyms at you. Um, I wanna look on the left, uh, I wanna draw your attention at least on the left to these concentric circles. Uh, and starting at the, the top, you know, we, we are part, a constituent part of New York University. <clears throat> As all of you know, I'm sure a very renowned, prestigious, global uh, research institution and, and possibly one of the most popular private universities in, in, in America and uh, within, um, or the world. And within that are, are, are various different um, con constituent schools, you know, so there are obviously famous schools like the, the law school or the medical school, et cetera. Um, the School of Professional Studies stands proudly alongside all of those has an almost 90 year history of educating professionals in, our, in various disciplines, uh, very much part of the workforce development of, of, of New York, of, of, of America, after the Second World War, for example. So a very proud, long history of dedication to applied professional education. Within SPS, the School of Professional Studies, we have a division, we have several divisions, uh, and the division of programs in business is really focused on training the functional leaders of the future, yeah? So we have, some units that are more focused on a vertical like travel 
But the Division of Programs in Business is really uh, a, a host of disciplines that uh, have transferable skills. So HR or project management, or in our case, marketing and PR. And then finally, obviously within the, the division, we have this department of integrated marketing, sometimes called IMC or IMNC, and they have two programs, uh, we, we, which are shortened often to PRCC and IM, uh, Public Relations and corporate, uh, uh, um, corporate Communications and Integrated Marketing. I think if I'm on track, the next slide is, is, is a turning over to the students, but uh, uh, good, I, I remembered my script there, friends. Um, we, we, uh, I really am delighted to introduce uh, colleagues from both the IMA and the PR League. I won't give too much away because they've got a, a full presentation. So without further ado, um, pop your questions in the chat. I will monitor that. And we're going to turn it over to Clara and then she'll be joined by Tristan. And I think once we're done with those two, I will probably just come back with some questions if that's okay for everybody. So hi everyone, I'm Clara and I'm the president of the Integrated Marketing Association at NYU SPS. So the four main objectives of our association are basically to educate, inform, inspire and entertain all students of the Integrated Marketing Program. To do so, we organize events that are both social and professional. So here are some of our past events. So we did a movie night at Bryan Park at the beginning of last semester. We also conducted a networking with professors. We also did an agency, this in-house panel that was our first event, in-person event of last semester. We also had a session called Brands and the Metaverse Imperative with the director of blockchain at Microsoft. We also conducted an Ignite session called Igniting Your Entrepreneurial Spirit with someone who just opened her own company. And our last event to date was called Redefining Beauty, the blend of marketing, culture, and innovation at L'Oréal with the senior vice president of marketing US at L'Oréal. And in terms of future events, we have this really big one coming up called the IMA Summit 2022, Journey to Authenticity. So I'd like to spend a little bit more time on the IMA Summit because everyone in this call can actually join the event right now. So the summit is truly our flagship event and features an amazing roster of speakers each year. So this year we have top executives from TikTok, Shell, Verizon, Poshmark, Spotify, AB InBev, and many more coming to talk about their brand's drive towards authenticity, as Michael mentioned at the beginning of the presentation. So let me give you like two main reasons why you should join. First, this kind of event honestly usually costs a couple like hundreds or even thousands of dollars to join, but thanks to NYU SPS support and generosity, this event is free for all of you. And second, you're not going to hear any of these conversations anywhere else. Like, for example, you probably all know that uh, about Nick Tran's departure from TikTok, and there were many controversy surrounding his departure, etc. So how about hearing the story from the guy himself, you know? He'll be one of our keynote speakers, actually. So this event will be online, and it will be next Thursday on March 10th. This is the link to register right there. And if someone can drop it in the chat as well, that would be amazing. Thank you, everyone. And Tristan, you can take it from there. Thank you, Clara. I appreciate it. Uh, so hi, everyone. My name is Tristan Petrelli, president of the PR League. And um, our mission for the PR League is really to support the growth of the PRC students. And we do that by providing, you know, engagement, engaging events such as, as you can see with these pictures, we have a student takeovers. We just recently did a networking event with PR professors, and that was a great turnout. We also have a series called Leadership in Action. And what we do is that we bring professionals in the PR field and we get to have more um, in-person or one-on-one -on -one conversations with them on what have they done to get to where they are. And as you can see on the right, that's a screenshot of the networking with professors event. We actually had professors from the integrated marketing department and from the PRCC uh, department too. So it was, it was fantastic to do that. The goal for the PR League is really just to get students involved as much as possible. Um, I know that it's been a little hard with COVID and everything, but we're very excited for what, what's to come next year with more in-person events and things like that. 
And for our future events, we actually have the PR League Summit, which is um, March 25th. So it's in like three weeks, if I'm not mistaken. And it's called the Empowerment Experience, Navigating My Identity in the Workplace. We chose to do this because it's a very important topic on diversity and inclusion. And we think that it's something that we can all, as you know, as a very diverse group of individuals can come to this and really talk about something that's really important um, in today's society. So, so thank you. Excellent. All right. Well, I, you know, both Tristan and Clara are very humble, I think, and uh, they, um, they do a lot more than organize events to really animate the student life. And I think, you know, a testament to their kind of grit and grit and uh, what's the word? Um, pers no, perseverance, I guess, is, is, is how extraordinary uh, their efforts were during COVID to keep the community connected. Um, I'm going to uh, maybe just take that slide down because I want to just talk a little bit quickly, address some of the questions and give folks a sense of where we'll go with these questions. Um, first of all, it's tremendous, uh, you know, the, uh, the uh, list of places where folks are calling in from and the range of professional experience is inspiring. I think, you, you know, anyone who's on this call has to think about those as your, your colleagues, your cohort, you know, that's the group of people that you join the program with. So that's exciting to see. Um, I wanna give everybody some confidence. There are some really good questions about things like choosing courses outside of SPS, um, things about transferring into the program. Um, and I Kat will address all of those uh, when she gets to her piece or, or certainly will pause and do those questions at the, at the end. So keep the questions coming. Um, uh, we we will absolutely get to those questions, um, and uh, I'm I'm monitoring the chat, uh, so don't so don't worry about uh, you know things getting lost. I'll absolutely monitor the chat. So, all right, let's just go back for a second to the slide deck because uh, I do want to um, I do want to uh, finish up uh, on some of the things that we at least wanted to share with you all. Um, it's it's one of the you know real joys. Um, uh, it's one of the real joys, frankly, of uh, leading the program and, and supporting my colleagues, both students, uh, faculty and staff, is, is the ability to engage such a really impactful group of industry leaders. And um, I would say on some days, you know, I'm sure Clara and, and, and Tristan would say that, you know, you probably have three or four different events you might be able to go to. Uh, certainly in a week, there are easily four or five, and, uh, and there are university organized things, school organized things. And so there's, um, an, as I think the French said, embrassement de richesse, you know, there is an awful lot of good stuff going on, but it's, it's you know, it'll enable you to really pick and choose and, and think about what tracks and what areas you're interested in. And if you're smart and savvy, it starts to help you build your network. Yes, yeah? so all of these people when they join us will volunteer, please you know, check with me on LinkedIn or you, know, you start to learn the issues that are important to them. So you know, just looking in the last week or so, we had Doug Hammond, who's the CEO of, of a large insurance company who'd done an amazing sort of turnaround. One of our faculty has actually written a book profiling, I think 10 CEOs and their efforts and, and, and Doug Hammond was one of them. So he's created a series called uh, Leadership in Changing Times. Uh, so our faculty member, Tariq Khan. Um, we have another faculty member, George Benaroya, who's done a series around leading global growth. And you'll see Walt Disney and Coca-Cola on the right-hand side. We've had uh, Nike, we've had IBM, we've had McDonald's, you know, very senior people joining the students, talking to the students, engaging. Um, and then at the bottom is this uh, Lessons from China series. We're, we're very fortunate that we actually are running a a satellite program in Shanghai right now where you can start uh, our, our degree. And it's enabled us to also program some really interesting speakers uh, and engaging conversations where we're looking at the transformation of marketing but through the lens of what's going on in China. So a couple of great speakers. And then to the left, um, Cecilia Dones, uh, heads up data science at Moet Hennessy, a wonderful colleague of ours who's been leading some conversations around stories in the, in the trade magazines and newspapers. And we just finished up a, a great session, a very powerful session with Jason Council, who uh, was recently elected um, as the head of culture for um, the Gersh Agency. And he, and he had a very engaging conversation around brand and social impact. So I think that gives you just a little bit of a flavor of some of the, um, you know, the content 
uh, and the co what's called co-curricular activity, uh, the people, the caliber of the people, the diversity and the range of the people that you'll encounter on NYU's campus, um, curated by the department and the students. So, um, all right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna turn it over to admissions, um, uh, and then maybe uh, maybe after you speak, Eddie, I'll see if there are any admission specific questions, and then we can come on to. Um, uh, curriculum and uh, and cat and then if there are any you know sort of curriculum specific questions we can we'll do with that if that's okay with everybody keep the questions coming these are great in the q a or the chat i'll, I'll monitor both okay yeah, thank you michael <clears throat> so let's delve into the admissions process so um it all starts with the online application which is available through our website at sps.nyu.edu and within the application you are going to be able to upload all your materials um the application fee is 150 dollars uh, we do require two letters of recommendation or two references and these can come from either professional or academic sources or it could be a combination of the two but of course you want to choose your recommenders that can really speak on your character, your work ethic, and your strength, and your potential for success in a graduate program. Uh, these letters must be, must be submitted online, and all you have to do is just enter your recommender's information on your online application, and NYU uh, will send out the secured links to your recommenders, and all they have to do is um, they just need to submit their letters. Uh, we also need your college transcripts. Um, so we only require unofficial copies of your transcripts for our review purposes. And you can simply upload these um, right into your application. However, once you're admitted, if you're admitted, uh, you are required to provide us with your official transcripts. And if you have attended multiple institutions, please note that we do require transcripts from each university that you have attended. Um, next item is your detailed resume. Your resume should be really outlining your previous and current work experience and internship um, and even including your extracurricular activities. Uh, you should highlight the transferable skills uh, that are applicable to the program, which will make you a stronger candidate. Um, which is, next one is my favorite, uh, your personal statement or statement of purpose. Um, I personally think this is a very important aspect of your application, and you should be able to provide a clear understanding of your interests in the program and some of those goals that you have upon completion of your master's degree program. Uh, your statement of purpose needs to be minimum 500 words for our MSN integrated marketing. However, please note that our MSN public relations and corporate, com corporate communication uh, does require two short essays uh, instead of the regular personal statement. Um, if you are an applicant with international, uh, international credentials, um, there are potentially additional requirements for you. So if you are applicants with international credentials, meaning if you have completed more than half of your academic program at an international university outside the US, uh, you are required to submit a course by course evaluation. And this includes institutions in Canada and the United Kingdom as well. Evaluations are required components since they determine how your academics are graded compared to the US education system, as well as if your degree is equivalent to a U.S. bachelor's degree. And we do accept evaluations reports uh, from six different NACES companies that are listed on our website. Please note that this can be a time-consuming process, so start this process as early as you can if you're in need of the transcript evaluation. In addition, if you attended a university uh, where the English is not a medium of instruction, you will need to provide us with the English proficiency score. Uh, we do accept the TOEFL or the IELTS. Uh, the minimum TOEFL score uh, that is required is 110 and 8.0 on your IELTS. In the case uh, where you're not able to attain those scores, uh, you're going to be prompted to take our Pearson's VEPT um, and the admissions office will be uh, providing you with the guidance and information on how to proceed if this is required for you. Uh, this is a 15 minute online exam and we use your Pearson's VEPT score along with your um, TOEFL or the IELTS score for your English proficiency. Um, you can move to the next slide, please. 
So now uh, let's take a look at the deadlines. Uh, for our fourth semester, the priority deadline unfortunately has passed. However, for international students, uh, if you can check on our website, the original uh, the final deadline for our international applicants is actually on 1st of April. However, we have extended the final deadline. So it's going to be 1st of May for international applicants. For domestic students, um, your absolute final deadline is going to be 1st of July. Uh, for those of you who are interested in or looking at our spring semester of 2023, uh, the priority deadline is September 15th and international final deadline is 1st of October and domestic final deadline uh, for spring semester is November 30th. One thing that I would like to um, stress and highlight is uh, it typically takes three to six weeks for our admissions committee to render a decision uh, on your application. However, uh, that's uh, based on the assumption that your application is complete. So we are sharing some of the contact information here. Um, if you have some private questions or questions that you don't feel comfortable sharing with us using the Q&A or chat feature, you can always reach out to us directly at sps.gradadmissions at ny.edu. Any financial uh, aid related questions, uh, you can refer that to our Office of Financial Aid. Contact information is shared here. And for those of you who are international students who are in need of, let's say, I-20 or F1 visa status, our office of Global Services is here to guide you and help you. So you can always reach out to OGS at nyu.edu. And that's all I have. I'm going to be handing things off to Kat for our amazing academic advising. I'm going to leave that up for a second. I'm going to jump in, Eddie, because we had a couple of admissions questions. So let's see if I can cover them off with you. We had a question about references, Eddie. Do they need to be in English? Yes, they must be um, written in English. Otherwise, our admissions committee uh, we are not able to um, evaluate your references, unfortunately. <laughs> okay, um, so you're just, so folks who have references in another language probably just have to get them translated um, with some kind of notarization, is that right? Or, or you as just need them- translated, we should, be, uh, we should be able to, as long as we are able to comprehend the content of your letter of recommendation, yeah. we should be fine. Yeah, just make sure the English translation goes on the letterhead, et cetera, so we know where it's coming from, et cetera. Um, we have a, an international student who's, uh, you know, starting out in one program, but is feeling like they'd probably like to transfer to our program for the second semester onwards. Uh, are we able to accept people in as transfers and, and what might the procedure be like? This would be an international student. So you can potentially uh, apply. However, uh, there are limitations on how many credits will transfer in. So for our graduate programs, you're potentially able to transfer up to six credit hours. But um, so the way things work is uh, once the student gets admitted and accepted and registered for the classes, uh, they will have the opportunity to sit with the academic advisor and academic advising office will be assisting them and they will be able to figure out how many credits will be transferred in. So they should be able to submit their application. Excellent. Um, Gina, I'm going to promote you if you want to come on video, if you're comfortable. Otherwise, you can just ask your, your question. Um, let's see. So uh, I'm promoting you to panelists. And if, you can, if you're comfortable, flip your video on. So, so we, should see, uh, we should see Gina pop up. She has a question, I think, about GREs and, and GMATs, etc. So G I can't see if you're there, Gina. So um, um, well, welcome, yeah. Gina. Thank you. So my question was actually about GREs. I know, well, for the program that I applied to, um, the GREs aren't, like, they're optional. Um, but there was another thing about IMAs. Is that required as well instead of the GREs, or can we not do any of them and just be accepted without um, either of the two tests? That's an excellent question. Uh, what I can share um, and to with every, everyone is that NYU SPS, uh, we do not require your GMAT or G, um, GRE scores. However, you can submit your scores uh, along with your application for consideration. But the bottom line is we do not require either GRE or GMAT. So you do not have to worry about the standardized tests. Hopefully that okay. makes you feel better. <laughs> Thank you so much. And I think Gina had a follow-up question, which I can um, I can perhaps yeah. help her out on, which is um, when, when we talk about international deadlines uh, for people, is it 
international students or just people studying outside the US? Is that, is that the question, Gina? Yeah, because uh, the domestic, so like I applied, but I applied after the 15th of January. Technically, like I'm studying in New York, so I don't know if that means I applied too late or if that counts since I'm an international student. Another excellent question that I'd be more, I'd be delighted to answer that question. So uh, we consider uh, students who are studying in the U.S. with the valid F1 visa, we consider those applicants to be, uh, at, uh, you know, applicants as domestic applicants. So as long as you're here in the U.S. studying with the valid F1 visa, uh, you are considered as domestic applicant. Those of you who are applying uh, from overseas and who are in need of F1 visa status, you are considered as international applicant. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I'm gonna take one question from Yang Li. Let's see if we can promote her to panelists. Yang, uh, if you're comfortable, um, if you're coming on, that's great. If you're on video, great. Uh, Hi. If, if not, uh, jump Thank forward you. with your question. I just have one question regarding the transcript evaluation because I study at Toronto, so I need that. But when I open the website, it asks me to fill a delivery address for the evaluation transcript. So I was wondering what is the address for this transcript? Yeah, I can answer that for you. Uh, it's an easy question. So um, it, it will be based on which evaluating agency that you're going to be utilizing for your services. So what I'm going to do for everyone is I'm going I'm going to be dropping the link um, in the chat uh, chat box so you can see uh, which six companies where we accept the evaluations from. Um, most likely, you are able to just input our physical address of. NYUSPS that I'm going to be also sharing. Uh, however, uh, modality or basically the delivery method of your evaluation will be electronic. So once you request your evaluation to be completed from one of those six companies, we are going to be getting your official copy of the evaluation. Of course, you are going to be getting the copy of your transcript evaluation for your um, copy as well. So once you get your copy, you're able to upload that right into your application. Things are going to be very seamless with our application uh, system. Um, however, please note that we are going to be getting the official copy directly from your evaluating agency electronically. Okay, thank you so much. Um, Jennifer, I, I wanted to address uh, one of the students' questions to you, if that's okay. Um, it's the uh, student, or the, uh, the potential student is, um, has a Bachelor of Communications already and very interested in going into PR. So. I wondered if you might comment on, you know, that career path and the, the value of the, the undergrad, but you know, what what incrementally they'll experience in the PR degree. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Michael. So um, this PR degree is a perfect combination of theory and practice uh, at the master's level. So uh, you know what you can expect in the degree is um, a more sophisticated understanding of some of the essential components of public relations. Um, some of the most important skills, uh, writing for PR, media management, corporate reputation, as well as an enormous amount of opportunities for practical application. Um, in your classes, your professors are all senior professionals. Um, they've done their time in PR. They'll bring those lessons to your class. And you will also, through our practicum, um, our real world program and others, you will get hands-on experience. So, you know, I don't think you can beat it in terms of somebody wanting to make a transition um, from one emphasis into another and really uh, be able to enter into the PR professional world um, with an advantage really over a lot of other uh, candidates for, for a lot of jobs, particularly at the entry level. And uh, Jennifer, I should probably give given a fuller introduction. She's very modest. Uh, Jennifer is the lead faculty of the PR program, but uh, uh, a very distinguished professional herself. She was managing director of Ogilvy PR for New York and global head of thought leadership for, for Ogilvy PR. So someone who very much comes from the world that I imagine, uh, you know, you as students aspire to and, and, and would want to be mentored by. So, so I really appreciate Jennifer joining. Um, um, Milos, there was a very interesting question from one of the students about um, essentially about learning. Uh, I, the student spent about 10 years in retail uh, and has already started to sort of think about 
Google certifications and things like that. But what they would like to do is really get much deeper into digital and traditional marketing strategies. So, you know, perhaps you, perhaps you have a perspective on, you know, some of that that journey. Um, uh, I know you you yourself had experience, not perhaps quite in retail, but in restaurant management and other other areas. But what what's that journey at NYU SBS like around digital marketing and traditional marketing? So. Oh, absolutely. Uh, thank you for for everybody being here. So uh, our program, uh, quite a few of our students are also career changers. So that's something that uh, I would not say that we're encouraged students to do, but uh, it, it's an option that uh, uh, we address within our uh, courses. So uh, additional thing when you now that you've mentioned uh, about certifications. Our program actually integrates a number of uh, professional certifications within our courses. This is something that is also part of the curriculum. And uh, the goal is truly to prepare students at the end of the day uh, for their new jobs, but not only for their first job, but for their job 10 years uh, after they graduate. So for quite a few managerial careers. And I've done the same thing when it comes to changing uh, careers. I went from... Uh, international trade to hospitality and then to consulting and then finally ended up in academia so did a full circle uh and i think it's something that is a possibility for quite a few so it's not only for traditional students that are going directly from bachelor into the master's degree however programs are suitable for those but also for those that are actually considering uh, career changes and the way we try to actually shape up uh, our courses considering that they're they're not uh, primarily theoretically driven they're actually really applied courses is that they're suitable for people at different levels of uh, uh, skills because we're talking about real world examples and as jennifer was saying about uh, pr uh, instructors most of our uh, faculty actually to be honest all of our faculty are industry professionals and are actively working uh, in the industry on a daily basis and they actually translate that experience into the classroom so this is something that uh, gives a unique take that, that that probably is different from any other program that you can get in us and hopefully again i'll see some of you in some of my courses digital marketing is uh, what i'm currently doing but also analytics thank you excellent all right well um I, what i'm going to ask folks to do eddie is uh, answering some questions in the chat that probably have a more general uh value in terms of deadlines and you know definitions of international students things like that so keep an eye on the chat as we transition to um Kat Tataglia, who's going to talk us a bit more around the role of advising but also the, the curriculum and you know the program itself so hi everyone thanks again for joining us um as michael mentioned my name is Kat and i'm an academic advisor here at the integrated marketing and communications umbrella so i work with both PR and integrated marketing students. Um, our mission in advising is to support you in any way we can outside of the classrooms. So, um, you know, we have our amazing faculty members here to take care of your uh, curriculum needs and everything you're doing, you know, with your formal learning. And we're here to really help you, you know, take advantage of all the amazing resources that NYU has. Um, so we work with you on academic planning, program requirements, our policies and procedures, again, the resources we have. And we just advocate for you, whether that's, you know, maybe you come to us with an idea for an amazing event that you wanna put on. We help you get in touch with the people you need to make that happen. So you can really shape your entire experience here with us at NYU. Um, we meet with you one-on-one -on -one in individual advising sessions. Um, we are happy to speak over the phone or via Zoom if you're not in New York City. Um, right now, in-person advising appointments are limited to active NYU students only, but I'll put our contact information in the chat box and we're happy to start the advising conversation with you, you know, right now at this point. Um, you don't have to be an admitted student. We'd love to meet with you, uh, you know, starting tomorrow. Um, so we also have group advising sessions. We have walk-in hours weekly, so you can meet with your advisor without an appointment. Um, anytime you have just an informal question um, or something that we can help you with quickly, you know, we're happy to do that. And we also have events throughout the semester as well. Um, for example, we just had 
an internship info session specifically geared for international students. So that was um, about an hour and a half info session with our Office of Global Services and our Wasserman Center for Career Development, which I'll mention um, in a few slides down, that's our Career Services Center. Um, so next slide, please. Uh, yep, so this is a quick look at the Integrated Marketing Program structure. It's 14 courses and 42 total credits. This is also available on our website. Um, so, you know, you'll definitely, we'll definitely be sending you this information. You'll become very familiar with um, the program structure. So we can take a look at the next slide, please. Okay, and this is the sequence. So the order that we recommend taking the classes. Um, it is a four semester program. However, we do offer summer classes as well. So you could finish, um, you know, you can do fall, spring, fall, spring, or you can take advantage of that summer semester. We do have some prerequisites at the bottom. So, you know, feel free to take a look um, in detail on your own time. And I'm happy to answer any more specific questions that you have about the curriculum. Let's just pause here for a second, because I think this is the meat of the program. So I think, uh... It's important to actually spend some time here. You know, as, as a student of marketing, uh, you know, if you go back to this idea of human centered and data driven, um, which is one very important aspect of our, of our education. The other is the notion of knowing how and not just knowing what, yes. And I think what you'll see in this uh, program, and uh, if you also see the list of concentrations, that this is built around ensuring that every student of marketing has a solid grounding in all of the principles of marketing you know that you would see and think something like an integrated marketing course some of the specificity of campaign one which is really about how business strategy becomes marketing strategy and advertising strategy uh, and then finance and stats which are really the language of business in some respects or certainly underpin a lot of the analytically driven decisions that are made campaign two will be a course that's much more about media media planning uh, media buying digital marketing speaks for itself Capacity strategy starts to take it into a dimension more around business and, um, you know, the role of marketing uh, in driving and creating value, but also getting you into the head of the C-suite executive. And then things like database management and modeling are still quite foundational. And you'll learn uh, a little bit of SQL, most likely. You'll also learn about how those tools are used. And the concentrations uh, draw from a much larger range of courses uh, based on whether you're in marketing analytics brand management um, or, um, or, and I'm blanking on the third, uh, embarrassing. So <laughs> you have to help me out there, Kat. Um, uh, I believe it's on the next slide, actually. Next slide, all right, brilliant. Um, this is why doing these late at night. So uh, anyway, so, so I just wanna give you a feel and we could talk through this similar on the PR. I think it's worth highlighting, Kat, you know, actually the content, of the course, and I'm sure I or Jennifer can jump in if you want a bit of color, so. Yeah, sounds good. And actually, I think uh, so we skipped to the PR slide, um, but we do have three concentrations. Um, you'll focus on those courses in your third semester. So they're brand management, digital marketing and marketing analytics. Those there are we go. The three concentration areas. Digital marketing. Sorry, no, no disrespect intended to digital marketing. So. <laughs> Uh, okay, so yeah, we'll take a look at the PRCC sequence. Um, you know, my goal, Professor Scott, feel free to jump in um, in terms of the you know curricular content. Um, again, 14 courses, 42 total credits, um, 10 core courses, three concentration classes, and one capstone course in your final semester. Um, so we can take a look at the course sequence. Um, next slide, please. Yeah, I like the course sequence. Um, I think that lays it out nicely. Um, so it's the structure is pretty similar to the integrated marketing program um, in terms of your first semester core classes. Second semester is also a prescribed sequence and you would take PR writing one before PR writing two. Research process and methodology is a research writing class that's completed before you take practicum and capstone in your final semester. And then within PR, um, there are two concentrations. So we have corporate and organizational communication and PR management. And you will choose two concentration courses within a single one of those concentration areas, as well as an elective course. Um, so you have 
quite a few elective options. You can choose a class in the other concentration. So whichever concentration you haven't identified as yours. Um, you can take a class at another graduate school at NYU, for example, Stern or Steinhardt. Um, I saw that question in the chat box. So yes, you can count three credits outside of the School of Professional Studies towards your degree. And we also have this amazing program at the School of Professional Studies called Real World. So if you're looking to transition into a new career in, in marketing or PR, for example, or maybe you're an international student looking to break into the New York City or US job market, um, or you're you know, kind of fresh out of undergrad and you're looking for some work experience, that's a great stepping stone to you know, an internship or a full-time job. Um, so it's a three credit class. There is an application required and you work with a worldwide firm, um, you know, really well-known firm throughout the course of a semester on a marketing slash PR project in multidisciplinary teams. So some past partners have been um, Instagram, Facebook, the Standard Hotel, Ferrari, the Jets, it kind of changes semester to semester. So, you know, you never know kind of what semester you'll find a company that really resonates with you. Um, so, you know, we place them in the third semester. There's a little bit of wiggle room there in terms of which company you'd like to work with. All right, so we're, I, I'm gonna ask us to pause, just make sure we can actually pick up some student questions rather than maybe us uh, banging on. So, um, Let's see if there's anything. So there's a good chance for anybody on the call to, you know, throw your questions in again, and we'll, we'll do a, a rapid, uh, a rapid round. Okay. Can we attend advising sessions virtually? Cat? Yes or no? Even if you're an international student. So, yes. Yes. Okay. You may attend via Zoom. All right. Um, are there opportunities for studying abroad at another NYU location in the integrated marketing program? Chloe, that's a great question. Uh, if you're a Chinese national, you currently can study in Shanghai. Uh, and we are looking at other opportunities for the students to do that. There are global field intensives. Um, uh, there's one actually organized by a sister department going out to Israel this year. There was one that went to Abu Dhabi. Um, and we are planning to do one to Cannes for the International Festival next year. So there are some opportunities um, uh, to do that. Um, let's see, other questions here. Can we access the recording of the session? Absolutely. I think anybody who registered will receive a copy of the uh, recording and uh, a copy of the presentation. Um, uh, if I finish my degree in a Peruvian university, does that count? I, Eddie, I imagine the answer is yes. Yes, um, but you will have to have it evaluated and you want to make sure that your credentials is equivalent to a US bachelor's degree. And Brilliant. I'm going to be dropping this in the chat. Any further admissions related questions? Uh, please feel free to uh, reach out to us at spsadmissions at nyu.edu. Yeah, especially if they're very specific, you know, then Eddie can handle you, uh, curate it. Um, Milos, um, are we partnering with any companies uh, to provide opportunities for students uh, in the areas of marketing and PR? Yes, absolutely. I mean, uh, a number of uh, companies are actually working together with us uh, and directly are integrated into some, into our curriculum companies like uh, VIX or HubSpot or uh, Think uh, uh, IQ. Like uh, we are actually uh, using their resources, and our students can get free accounts to actually, uh, for example. Uh, just in HubSpot, everybody has access to enterprise accounts that are like $3,500 and that can utilize those and also get like certifications that otherwise would uh, be charged for actually quite a lot of money. So this is something that we are uh, doing in a number of courses where it's not, where it's uh, really about learning the tools that you would anyway use in the industry uh, that most of the big companies are currently using. And I, I think just to build on Milos's answer, you know, these those are programs that we've curated. But, you know, I, I would conservatively say in the course of a semester, you probably, I mean, easily have 50 to 100 different companies represented one way or another in the classroom or in events or specialties, you know, so um, a very large number of companies work with us, come back a lot spend time with our graduates, um, you know, so I, I, and then, and, you know, we skipped over, unfortunately, but there is a, 
a Wasserman Center, which is dedicated exactly to matching you with, you know, potential work opportunities. So that exactly. was you might want to say also about our advisory board. This is something that is also. Yeah, important. and, I, and that's, that's a very fair point. You know, we, we've been quite blessed by getting a lot of support from the industry and and are honored to welcome people like uh, Antonio Lucio, who's a former CMO of Facebook and, and PepsiCo, and Javier Meza, who's a CMO at uh, Coca-Cola, and you know Catherine Metcalf, who's the Chief Communications Officer over at CVS Health, and Judith Harrison, who heads up equity, diversity, and inclusion globally for Weber Shanwick. Uh, you know, a bunch of really wonderful people. Mark Trust, the Chief Research Officer, Wonderman Thompson. So some very interesting uh, folks. Anna Maria De Salva, who is the global head of Hill and Norton Strategy is one of the preeminent um, uh, PR consulting firms and PR strategy firms. So, you know, a very, a very strong set of advisors who are very active with us and, you know, supportive and, and help us uh, shape and think through things as well. So there was a question about how long the average class is. Um, uh, I think that there's, that there's two answers to that question. So a semester typically is 14 weeks and a class meets once each week for about two and a half hours. So I think that answers that question. What I, if I'm reading behind the question, um, and it also might uh, address Shana's question as well, I, I'll have Kat speak to this about part-time, but um, typically students are doing, I, I guess you could say on average students do four, the median is that students do four courses a semester. Um, I think that's correct, but you, you, there are certain minimum requirements if you're an international student and, um, You'll have to tell me, Kat, what the minimum are for, a, if you're a part-time student, is there a minimum number you can uh, you can do per semester, per semester? Yeah, so actually the great thing is that we don't actually distinguish between part-time or full-time applicants, nor do we you know, divide you in our system. So if you're a domestic student and you don't have a visa requirement, you can move between three credits all the way up to 12 from semester to semester. So if you know you're gonna be busy at work, for example, over the summer, you might only take one class for three credits. In the fall, you can enroll in two for six credits. Um, so you have some flexibility. Nine credits and above is considered full-time enrollment. But again, we don't prevent you in any way from moving between those two statuses if, you're, um, if you don't have re visa requirements. If you are an international student, you need to be enrolled in at least nine credits, that's full-time every fall and spring semester summer and is that's in person semester. and that is in person yeah, yeah so at least one course i think must be in person at this point is that right yeah so the requirements have loosened a little bit because of covid so we have international students studying with us this spring who are in one in-person class and two to three online classes um, but if you're thinking of starting with this in the fall or even spring 2023 definitely a good idea to have a conversation with an international student advisor so they can give you the most up-to-date information about your particular case um, because things are changing rapidly they do a great job monitoring your requirements and they'll be able to let you know what you should register for and then to shana's question uh, hopefully I, I got your name right there shana the, there are i think about 20 percent of our students are part-time in the in our programs uh i am and pr roughly that and, um, you know, it is designed for people to do as working professionals. So I think you, you know, you, you, you know, the students may want to speak to that. I, I, I would say for every class you teach, there's probably somewhere between, you know, easily five to six hours, perhaps a little more each week, every, every class you uh, take, you know, of homework and reading prep and things like that, group work, et cetera. So, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a full engaged program but you can take it part-time in the sense you do less credits each semester. Shana, hopefully that answers your question. And Chloe, uh, po Chloe, if I didn't get to the what you were looking for, just pop in the chat. So I think we're in good shape uh, for most questions. I want to thank you all for joining us. Um, all of the panelists um, and pa uh, Patrick, perhaps you can put up that one slide that had all of the contact information. Folks can maybe you know, uh, stick their um, uh, screen, you know, take a quick photo of that, uh, that slide. Um, I think there, yeah, that's, there's one slide. We're gonna send the deck to everybody, so don't worry about uh, that. And then I think there was another slide uh, later with, uh, with everybody's uh, contact from advising, et cetera. But 
But, uh, you know, please feel free. That these are folks whose job it is to be helpful. Um, you know, I welcome you to follow up with me directly. You can find me on LinkedIn and I'm sure with Milos and Jennifer as well, they, they would, uh, you know, field some questions, have to give us a little time to respond, but uh, we're very happy to do so. And I, I wish you all the very best of luck and hope to see you all on campus. Thank you for uh, our panelists. Thank you very much for spending your evening with us and for our um, students and potential students. We genuinely appreciate your interest in the program. Uh, we're going to try and capture all any remaining Q and A's and see if we can, you know, get them uh, back aggregated in a note when we send the, the deck out. So, all right. Thanks, everyone.